Hello class, welcome to Managerial Accounting. This is the first video um, for the semester. It's an introduction to what we're going to be covering all semester long. So in this chapter, it really is just a review of a really introduction to a lot of the different topics that we're going to be talking about and discussing throughout the semester. Some of these topics are, are kind of difficult to understand, so I think that's why they put it into the very first chapter, so that you get some little flavor of these different topics that we're going to be covering throughout the semester. Now, the textbook starts off by talking about planning, uh, evaluating, and controlling. Those, that discussion is pretty basic, so I'm going to leave that up to you. I think you can just read through the chapter and get those concepts and the terms that go along with those concepts. The next part of the chapter talks about cost, volume, profit analysis. This is a key part of, of managerial accounting. We're going to go over this in detail later on in the semester, but like I said, this chapter goes over just a little bit of a lot of different topics. So we're going to introduce this concept to you, and then we're going to go over it again later in the semester. Now, cost, volume, profit analysis is a really important tool for us to, to measure how successful a business can be. Okay, we're going to be looking at the cost, looking at the volume of those costs, and looking at profit also, hence CVP, or cost, volume, profit analysis. Now, I'm going to use an example of building a chair. Let's say we sell chairs, and we have a wooden chair that we're going to be building. And let's say this, this wood chair, uh, let's say that it costs us uh, $50, $50 in lumber, or $50 in, in materials and labor to put it together. Okay? So, let me just define a couple of terms first before I go any further. We have to look at variable costs and fixed costs. Okay? Variable costs are costs that vary in proportion to the activity. Okay? So, for example, I said that we're building a chair. The lumber, the wood that goes into this wooden chair, would be a variable cost. Let's say um, that it costs 20 or $20 to, uh, for the lumber for this chair. That would be a variable cost. Every time we build a chair, we're going to need $20 worth of lumber. So it's varying depending on how many chairs. So if we're only building one chair that day, we're only going to need $20 worth of lumber. If we build 10 chairs in a day, that's $20 times the 10 chairs, or $200. Okay, So it varies in direct proportion to however many chairs we're manufacturing. Okay? Now, lumber or materials are typically variable costs. They're going to be variable costs because they're going to vary depending on how many we build. Okay? Another variable cost is typically the salaries of the people that are working on building the chair. So let's say we pay somebody $15 an hour. And let's say it takes them an hour to build this chair. Then their salary cost, that $15, would also be part of the variable cost. Because if they're going to build one chair, it'll take them one hour. That $15 is a cost of building the chair. If they build two chairs, that's going to be two hours. $15 per hour, $30 actually now, because we're building two chairs. So once again, this is going to vary in direct proportion to the number of chairs that we build. Let's move on to fixed costs. Fixed costs don't vary in proportion they stay fixed for that time period. So a good example there is the supervisor. Usually when you are building something, there's somebody who's the supervisor, who oversees it. This person does not get in there and start building typically. This person is supervising the manufacturing of whatever we manufacture. Once again, in our case, it's these wooden chairs. Okay. So let's say his salary is $30,000 a year. That would be a fixed cost. It doesn't matter if we build 100 chairs or 10,000 chairs, his salary is not going to change. Okay, so it's a fixed cost. If we do 100 chairs, $30,000, a fixed cost. If we do 100,000 chairs, still his salary is $30,000, is not going to change. Okay, so fixed costs don't change. If we're renting space where we build our chairs, let's say we rent it for $1,000 a month, that's a fixed cost. Doesn't matter how many chairs we build that month, we're going to pay rent of $1,000. It's a fixed amount. Okay? So obviously, if we have these fixed costs, we want to build as many chairs as we can and sell them to make the most money. Because the fixed costs aren't going to change, but the more chairs we manufacture, the cost per unit is going to go down. Okay? And we'll get into that in more detail later in the semester. 
All right, so now let's use an example. Let's say that the variable costs are $50. And in my example, let's say that our fixed costs are $10,000. So once again, these variable costs will include such things as materials and labor. Those are the two most common variable costs. I'm sorry, the most common variable costs, materials and labor. So in our case, the materials were the lumber and the salary of uh, the, the, the hourly rate for our employees who build the chair. Our fixed costs were such things as uh, the managerial, oops, I did that wrong, hold on. I didn't want it to be 10,000, I want it to be 100,000, okay? So, the fixed cost would be the salary of our uh, manager, supervisor, uh, could be such things as rent, insurance costs, okay? There's all sorts of things that are, are fixed costs. So we have to determine our costs, what the cost of building our product is, and then we have to categorize them as either variable or fixed, okay? Now, I'm gonna erase this top part, because we're going to use this information to go forward. All right. So our fixed costs are $100,000. Our sales price, so we've got to determine a sales price here. And I'm going to say the sales price is $90. So we sell these chairs. They're nice chairs. We sell them for $90 a chair. Okay. Our variable costs are $50. So what we do is we take this, this sales price of 90 minus 50, and we get $40. This is called, this $40 is called the contribution margin. I'm just gonna put CM. It stands for contribution margin. Every time we sell a chair, we have $40 that will pay off our fixed costs. Think about that. Every time we sell a chair, what's gonna happen? We're going to have $40 left over, and that $40 will be used to pay down our fixed cost. So, I took our fixed cost of $100,000. I'm going to divide that by $40. And what does that get us? That gets us $2,500 chairs. Okay? When we sell 2,500 chairs, and we have a contribution of $40, we're going to cover our full $10,000. That's the break-even point. That's where we break even. We, we have the break-even uh, profit loss. So we're not going to have a loss. We're not going to have a profit. We're exactly at break-even. If we sell 2,501 shares, now we're at a profit of $40. So once we hit that break-even, every $40 after that is pure profit for us. Okay? Think about that. Right? Now in accounting, remember, I can sit here and I can lecture and lecture and lecture to you, but you really got to sit back and try and think and understand how this stuff works. It makes perfect sense, but it's up to you to put the time and effort in to understand this. Okay? So at 2,500 shares, we're going to break even. When we go above this, that's going to be pure profit, $40, because there's going to be $40 of contribution margin every time after that. Okay. Um, I will tape another, uh, another lecture very soon that goes on to more details of different types of costs, direct costs, indirect costs, and so forth. All right, good luck. Have fun with accounting. It's uh, going to be a good semester. Thanks.